Hello and welcome again to Camden 3. I'm just about to find the mass of this material using this analytical balance. Before I begin to use this balance, it's important that I ensure that it's properly leveled on this surface. The balance does come with a tiny bubble in here that allows me to know if it's level on the surface. If the balance is not level, then this can lead all of my readings to be off by a particular factor. So if this mass is 0 0.100 of a gram, then the balance might read 0 0.102 of a gram. And all subsequent readings on this balance would be slightly greater than the actual reading, all of them being off by the same percentage of error. That type of error because it all goes in one direction, in this case, above the set value, and because it all goes by a known percentage factor, that type of error is called a systematic error. But when I get everything set with this balance and it's properly level, and I go ahead and find the mass of something on it, the mass is also subject to error. That error would be based on the uncertainty of the balance, which here it's given as 0.001 grams and in that case the value that I get can go above the accurate value or below the accurate value whereas systematic errors tend to go in one direction and they are off by a specific factor. Take this burette for instance. It measures the volume of a sample in here to an uncertainty of half of this smallest increment. The smallest increment on the burette is 0 0.1 of a milliliter and half of that is 0 0.05 of a milliliter. Every time I measure a volume using the burette, the actual value could be off from the truly accurate value by plus or minus 0 0.05 of a milliliter. It could be above or below. That too is a random error. But if this burette is not calibrated properly, then every time I take a reading with this burette, it would be subjected to some set factor, some built-in correction factor, and that type of error is systematic. Systematic errors usually come from poorly calibrated instruments, like a balance, or a pH meter, or a burette. Let's move in now and take a closer look at random and systematic errors. So we've divided these experimental errors into random errors and systematic errors. Random errors affect both the accuracy and the precision of your data. Meaning to say that because of random error, the value that you report from the reading of a meter stick or a burette or a thermometer could be off from the exact or accurate value either being above or below. Reaction time is another example of random error. And fluctuations in things like temperature and wind as you try to collect your data can push the value above or below the truly accurate value. This affects, of course, the accuracy, but it affects also the precision, which means that each time you collect your data, there's going to be a lack of consistency and there can be a significant amount of variation, random variation in the data that you collect. On the other hand, systematic errors only affect accuracy. Recalling the example of the balance that is not leveled or pH meter that is not properly calibrated, then in these cases, the instrument will give readings that are away from the accurate value, but it does so and follows a consistent pattern, either being above or below. And when it's above or below, it's above or below by a specific factor. Other examples of systematic errors could be flaws in your methodology. For instance, if you transfer a liquid or a powder and there's a consistent loss of reactant, then the final answer will always be skewed in a particular direction based on that loss. Personal judgments also with respect to the subjectivity of color changes tend to go only in one direction and that would make these kinds of errors also systematic. When you use a device like an analytical balance to measure the mass 
of a substance. The uncertainty associated with that balance is a random error. So here this 0 0.01 grams of uncertainty or absolute uncertainty is a random error. And this random error could also be expressed as a percentage of the mass that you're finding, giving you a relative uncertainty as a percentage. When you carry out complex analysis, it's important to find the relative uncertainty associated with each of your steps. And at the end of the analysis, to take the sum of all the relative uncertainties so that when the final answer is given, the uncertainty associated with it is included. And here we can see this bathroom scale. Written here is an uncertainty of 0 0.1 of a kilogram. This uncertainty is very much consistent with the fact that the mass is reported to one decimal place, or 0 0.1 of a kg. Which means that when someone finds a mass of 76.3, the uncertainty associated with it is plus or minus 0 0.1 of a kilogram. But is this a random error or a systematic error? If you say it's a random error, then you're correct. Systematic errors, though, would arise if this balance is poorly calibrated in the first place or if it is not set on a level surface.